Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode on RunGate. Last, last episode we talked a little bit about posture and how to set your body up for a run before you head out. Today we're going to focus on foot strike, how that foot lands and interacts with the ground, as well as the orientation of the lower leg. There's a lot of dialogue out there about heel strike versus forefoot strike, so we'll try to discuss that and figure out what's most efficient for you. A few years ago, a book called Born to Run came out and really put run form and run gait into a spotlight, specifically focused on how that foot lands with the ground and how modern day shoes interact with the ground and might change someone's biomechanics. The big argument was that a lot of cushion and an elevated heel facilitated crashing that heel into the ground, running with a longer stride, and potentially set the body up for greater risk of injury. If we're to stand still and set one foot well out in front of our body, and take away that weight off the, the leg that supported us in, in the back, you'll feel a significant negative force as you drop back. So anytime that foot crashes and lands out in front of the body, in essence, we're putting on the brakes and setting the body up for more force than, than is necessary. So our goal is to get the body up at speed, eliminate the braking force on foot contact, and simply land beneath the body when we land. So when we watch Rungate from a lateral side view, we're looking really at that lower leg and the lower shin bone, that orientation when the foot lands. If that shin bone's near vertical or slightly over, then there's gonna be a lot less braking force on the body, and that body's landing with good elasticity through the ankle, the knee, and the hip to absorb shock. If that leg is locked out, the shin's driving in at an angle towards the ground, there's gonna be a lot more load on the joints and more braking force. The, the runner could really run, honestly, with heel strike and a forefoot strike in either of those stances. So the key, the key there is that the shin is quite close to vertical and you're getting that foot underneath the body. If a runner's already running with that near vertical shin, I'd be less concerned with how that foot has fallen if they're not prone to injury. But if there is a chronic injury in the calf or Achilles or the shin, then there may be some reasoning behind switching that run gate up a little bit in terms of how the foot interacts with the ground and really looking at where that contact point is. Landing more forefoot, to take load off the shin, landing more, a little bit more heel or full foot to take load off the calf and Achilles. When looking at run gate, you really have to look at the whole picture. Core strength and strength all the way from the knee through the shoulders is gonna dictate a lot of biomechanics. But today, for simple purposes, if you're an athlete that is prone to injury, footfall and foot strike is one place to look. Just in summary, we wanna avoid overstriding with a lot of braking forces with stress on the joints and through the lower leg try to land directly beneath the body. One simple drill you can do before you head out for a run is try to remember what it's like to be a kid again and skip in place or skip down the road or track before you head out for your run. Skipping is an excellent drill to pinpoint that foot strike directly beneath the body and feel nice elastic recoil of the leg as you land and then lift and then transition that into the run so you feel where that foot placement is taking that into your run gate. Thanks again for joining us this week. I hope this dialogue on foot strike can help make your run a little bit more efficient. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and please join us in the future as we discuss more elements on run form to include core strength, run drills, cadence, and forward lean. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon.